depend on uh, you know, what, what I have done and what I've seen. Uh, Friday night, um, I was in contact with the chief of police, with the uh, public works director, with the uh, Seymour ambulance folks, with the fire department, uh, with our emergency management director, uh, all evening long, um, trying to you know coordinate how everything was going to be done. Uh, to Alex's statement, um, there is going to be a meeting of all the emergency management personnel tomorrow morning to see how we can do things better. I will express your concerns. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, Friday evening, I, I was out at uh, Scoprat Street. One of the first repairs they made on the right-hand side of Scoprat, as you go up uh, next to the pump house, uh, I visually, you know, I, I saw that there was a hole about a foot wide, but it was about four foot deep. And that's how the, what the erosion was. And this went on for about approximately 70 feet. Two dump truck loads of uh, millings were brought over to fill that in. <clears throat> um, the bridge at Day Street and Pearl Street uh, was questionable uh, because one of the fire trucks went over and the driver had the sensation that the thought the front of the truck was sinking. So there was some, some concern. We blocked off that bridge, closed that bridge right away. As it turns out, on Saturday morning, Jim Galligan, our, our town engineer, and two fellows from DOT came out to check the bridge. They were deter they determined that the bridge was safe. Um, the concern, I guess, was that there would have, might, might have been erosion where the bridge ended and the street started, but we've been uh, reassured that that isn't the case, that what the sensation they felt was from all the pavement coming apart and floating away with the, the torrent of, of the of water uh, on the Day Street Bridge. Um, Saturday morning, I was out at 7 o'clock again. Uh, I was up on the bridge on 67 talking to, to the uh, contractors for CLMP. Uh, they told me that the power would be back on by mid-afternoon on Saturday. They had a lot of cutting and, and pole replacement to do. They worked all night to, to get that done. Uh, CLMP actually contracted that out to get done. Uh, uh, in the meantime, by Saturday, I talked to Len, um, and uh, Len assured me that uh, you know, that he would get whatever help he could get from the state um, to be done. Uh, as I was on the bridge with Jim, uh, determining that that was safe, I got a phone call from Rosa DeLauro's office, um, and she told me that to call her on Monday that she was going to get a couple people out to take a look at the situation. Um, uh, and then uh, we, I, I took a better tour of, of the land trust property and, and the Chatfield Park property that everyone else did which seems to be pretty much the hardest hit. Uh, some of the roads were pretty severely hit, but the, the parks, uh, the two parks side by side seem to have uh, 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 had a lot of damage to them. Uh, from washing out of the, the uh, walkway to um, the, all the uh, mulch under the playscape and in the underneath the pavilion being washed out. Uh, what had happened was uh, the bridges that are up in, in the trails had uh, been knocked off of their foundations and it caused the uh, a blockage of the brook and it made the water go across the, the fields over toward the fence. So when the water got over toward the fence, it did uh, wear out some gaping holes uh, right next to the fence. Um, and when I saw those, I said, we're closing the park because it's just too dangerous for the kids. I immediately called the police department, told that uh, Chief uh, Metzler were closing the park, that I'd appreciate it if the police officer would patrol more frequently because uh, we didn't have any signs that said park closed. Uh, it was just going to be up to the officers to, to try to take care of that. Uh, I went over to 98 Bank Street. Uh, there was some flooding in the uh, Valley Health Department building on the first floor. There was a large hole in the parking lot in the back um, to be taken care of. And then I went up to School Street, uh, which seemed to be the biggest washout of a road. Uh, that area was probably about five feet wide, but about <coughs> seven feet deep. Uh, that was filled uh, that, that day with millings that the uh, Public Works Department came out with. Uh, that was huge. That, it was unbelievable to see something that, that large. Uh, again, uh, then I, I contacted uh, Owen McClure from DOT. He's the uh, um, manager in, up at Beacon Falls. Uh, he told me that the uh, DOT will be cleaning Route 8 on Monday, Route 67 on Tuesday, which they were out doing today. And then after that, if our Public Works Department needed help with anything, that they would be glad to help us. They'd lend us equipment. Uh, they'd lend us a, a man or two if it was available uh, to help. Uh, so far, we've not had to take them up on the offer, but they did. They were out on 67 cleaning up a lot of stuff today. Uh, 
taken pictures of it, almost everything. Uh, and as many of, of you have, have taken pictures. Uh, and again, on, then on Sunday, I talked to Peter Boynton, who's in charge of the uh, Homeland Security uh, Emergency Management Department for the state of Connecticut. Uh, he assured me that we would uh, get assistance from them. He advised me on what, what we needed to do to make sure we documented, took pictures documented. Dennis has been keeping records. Paul Wedowitz has been keeping records. Uh, Jim Galligan has said stuff. Uh, all, people have been working together to get all, make sure we have all the information we need. Uh, Monday, Rosa Deloro's aides came out, took a tour of the town, surveyed the damage. Um, the one thing they suggested at that point, and I called Len about this, is that they suggested that we also coordinate with Beacon Falls and Oxford, um, even though they didn't have nearly as much damage as us, that we coordinate the effort and, and uh, regionalize it so that we possibly will reach the threshold in order to receive funds. So I, I put in the call to, to uh, First Luckman Cable and First Luckman uh, Drake Rogers in, in Oxford, and uh, they have already been in touch with, with Jim. Um, he's the engineer in those two, two communities as well, and he's going to get all the uh, damage assessments from those two community, communities so that uh, uh, it'll make it a little bit easier for us to try to reach that threshold. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the threshold is. Um, I'm waiting to hear back what it exactly was. I heard unofficially from someone that works there that it's somewhere around a million and a half dollars. Um, <clears throat> judging by some of the, the washouts and some of the storm drains and, and uh, the damage to the land trust and the Chatfield Park, I think we might make that threshold. Um, we're going to, we're gonna, you know, that, I don't wish we didn't have to, but um, I think we're going to make it and I think uh, we'll be able to get some, some money back. So everybody's been working together. Like I said, tomorrow morning there's a meeting of all the emergency management personnel to see how we could have handled Friday evening better. Um, and uh, that's, uh, that's about the, the report I have to, at this point. Uh, I will be updating the Board of Selectmen on any things that go forward from here concerning this issue. Um, and as, as to, you know, to the extent that I can, we will get that same information out to the press so that the townspeople will know what's going on. Uh, and I, Len told me if he gets any more inf from information from the state, he'd let me know. Um, tomorrow I'm going to be at the, a meeting that the governor's at. Len's going to be at the same meeting. And we're going to break his ear off on the other side to uh, make sure that we uh, get some funds. I told Len, let me have the first shot because he's my party, but he can have him second. But uh, <coughs> we're, we're going to try to get after him. So that's where we are with that, uh, the damage from Friday.